Welcome to day six of Black History Month, 28 Days of Black Excellence. I'm your host, Faith Amore, and today we're going to be delving into the world of science. Who was this man? He was a gifted painter, musician, and actually pianist and singer, but that's not what we know him for. He discovered hundreds of uses for peanuts and was the progenitor of a $500 million industry. He has his own day that's celebrated January 5th. You may have guessed it, he is George Washington Carver. Let's go here. George Washington Carver, he was born a slave in Missouri, maybe around 1864 or 65, we're not quite sure. His parents were purchased by a German immigrant and uh, in Missouri, while he was still a baby, his father was killed in a work accident and um, his mother and sister were kidnapped. So he ended up being raised by slave his slave owners uh, and they actually decided to raise him and his older brother as their own. George used to spend lots of free time in the woods. They would call him the plant doctor because he could make any plant grow. In In my childhood, I was called the plant reaper because I could make any plant wither, but it's not about me. When he was about 12 years old, he was taken in by a black couple and introduced to the AME Church, that's the African Methodist Episcopal, and his relationship with God uh, started then and, be and continued to grow. He felt that science and God could coexist without any conflict. When he was a young adult, he applied to and was accepted to go to the school at Highland College, who refused him when they realized that he was black. I can only imagine. He decided to, okay, change his plans and homestead for a year, but he really wanted more education. So he took a risk and decided to try again. He made a new plan to study piano and art at Simpson College, but upon the recommendation of one of his instructors, he was actually uh, he actually went to Iowa State College next and got his bachelor's, master's um, in agricultural science and botany and ended up teaching at that university. He was the first black man ever to do all three of those things. Each of those things individually, he was the first to do. He was a rising star in the world of agriculture. Uh, and agricultural science specifically. And he was quite well paid and an educated black man, so that made him quite popular at the time. Um, but one day, Booker T. Washington reached out and made an unusual request. I, I was uh, on the IP website and uh, this letter came up and I thought it was really interesting, so I would love to read it for you. One day, 1896, there was a letter from Booker T. Washington, the president of the fledgling Tuskegee Institute, and uh, he was, you know, at the time, very well known and an influential educator, and he really wanted George to become part of his school, become an instructor. So he wrote, Tuskegee Institute seeks to provide education, a means for survival to those who attend. Our students are poor, often starving. They travel for miles on torn roads across years of poverty. We teach them to read and write, but words cannot fill stomachs. They need to learn how to plant and harvest crops. I cannot offer you money, position, or fame. The first two you have. The last, from the place you now occupy, you will no doubt achieve. These things I now ask you to give up. I offer you in their place work, hard work hard work, the challenge of bringing people from degradation, poverty, and waste to full manhood. And his response, my dear sir, I am just in receipt of yours the 13th and hasten to reply. I am looking forward to a very busy, pleasant, and profitable time at your college and shall be glad to cooperate with you in doing all I can through Christ who strengthened me to better the condition of our people. Some months ago, I read your stirring address delivered at Chicago, and I said amen to all you said. Furthermore, you have the correct solution to the race problem. Providence permitting, I will be there in November. God bless you and your work. Okay. 
So there you go. He decided to go ahead and become part of the Tuskegee Institute, and he ended up teaching there for over 40 years, about 47, and actually died on the campus of Tuskegee Institute after a fall. Now, what was he able to accomplish? This man, this incredible man called the plant doctor, uh, he found over 300 uses for the peanut. Now, peanuts weren't as big a thing uh, when he first got started. Uh, people who were, well, farmers who were doing agriculture, they were planting primarily cotton crops in Alabama. And they were finding that year after year there, yield would be smaller and smaller. And Washington realized that what they needed to do was to diversify, essentially. I learned all this stuff about farming. I had no idea it would be in my head, but it is now. Um, so he wanted to teach the farmers to try using soy and to, let's see. Uh, so soy um, instead of the cotton um, and other things that I had in my notes. Oh, there they are cow peas uh, and peanuts to add nit nitrogen to the soil. Uh, so these were cheaper ways to fertilize the soil um, so that they would actually not be stuck with only cotton because the ball weevil was becoming a thing. Um, basically a locust that was eating out the, the cotton and so they weren't like they couldn't count on that anymore if they wanted to be sustainable. So George gave them options. <sighs> Yeah, farming and science, not my thing, but this is really interesting, so I was really excited to learn about it. Um, yeah, so he actually ended up meeting with three different U.S. presidents, the Prince of Sweden, um, teaching them about these agricultural processes and kind of training them and making it, helping with the tariff process for peanut. Uh, he was really, really influential in that regard. I thought that he was the one who created peanut butter, and I wanted to thank George Washington Carver for that, but apparently that is not necessarily the truth. Um, he was, you know how you hear about someone being associated with one thing? Like, he was primarily associated with peanuts. So you kind of assume, and that's kind of what happened, especially um, after his passing. But no, it was someone else. But it's okay, because he, he made sure that uh, he found other uses for peanut oil that are actually also in cosmetics and soaps and, and all sorts of things that you would never think of. Dyes, inks. Uh, so I thought that was, I thought that was just great. Uh, I'm hearing clicks. I think it means that someone's watching, but I don't know how to do that. So anyway, um, yeah, so he decided to think outside of the box and ensure that people were not relying on one thing to make their income. And so for me, business mind, it makes me think, okay, so di diversifying your your income streams, having multiple, that's the kind of thing that, that in terms of a challenge, that's something that I want to try and do so that I'm not only reliant on one thing to survive. So that's part of what I will be taking from what I've learned from Jar George Washington Carver. Uh, and I challenge you, what can you do or think about or try in the spirit of George Washington Carver? I challenge you to be the first, be the best, be the one we talk about for years to come. Share your thoughts in the comments. Today we learned about George Washington Carver and found out he didn't invent peanut butter but found all sorts of other reasons to use peanuts. We look back so we can look forward to a better world. See you tomorrow when we'll talk about Black Moses. I'm Faith Amore. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.